Good day, everyone. Today, I am going to present to you my topic entitled Environmental and Chemical Methods of Disease Prevention and Control of Penate Stream Bioassay and Biological Assay, presented by your truly, Mark Villasilio, presented to BS Fast 4 A and B classes, and to Professor Wilma S. Hermaneta, Fish Health Subject Teacher, a staff of CIFAS, CSU Apari. For introduction, bioassay of health management in aquaculture. In animals, the primary purposes of bioassays are to measure the pharmacological activity of new or chemically undefined substances, as well as to determine side effect profiles, including toxicity. Bioassays are keys in determining the potency and stability of a drug substance or product in order to establish its safety and efficacy profile. For aquatic organisms, a biological assay is a procedure involving use of the responses of aquatic organisms to detect or measure the presence or effect of one or more substances, waste or environmental factors alone or in combination. Episodics of both infectious and non-infectious etiology have continuously plagued the various sectors of the industry. Although it is generally recognized that intensive culture systems often encounter serious diseases problems, more recent experiences have shown that low density culture systems can also be severely affected. This is as due to infectious organisms such as virus, bacteria, fungal, protist, and parasitic diseases. Likewise, the non infectious environmental problems can affect the health of culture streams and its industry. For the disease prevention and control of cultured species in the Philippines, aquaculture is one of the world's fastest growing food produce in industries. World disease outbreaks, on the other hand, are being increasingly acknowledged as significant. Constraint to aquaculture pro production and commerce have a negative impact on both the economy and the environment. More so with many countries that experience economic and social progress. For the science and detection of disease on cultured crustacean, shrimp illness is regarded as one of the most serious constraints to a commercially successful production. As a result, there is a critical need to devise and implement workable solutions to this issue. Disease outbreaks are recognized as a significant restriction to aquaculture production and trade, affecting both the economic development and social economic revenue of the other sector in many countries in the world. Changes in the appearance, abnormalities of movement in the environment, and microorganism infections are the most common detection of diseases to many cultured aquatic animals. For the objectives, first, to understand and diagnose the causative agent and symptoms of disease per present, to determine the different environmental and chemical methods of disease prevention and control to crustacean and Third, lastly, to know the importance of disease prevention and control to cultured shrimp and updates. Diseases in crustacean, diagnosis and environmental and chemical disease prevention and control. First, we have white spot syndrome or WSS, its causative agent. White spot syndrome virus, WSSV, is the pathogen behind white spot disease, WSD in shrimps. In 2014, an outbreak of the white spot syndrome virus in the Philippines reduced local shrimp production from 1 to 1.5 ton per hectare to 200 kilos or less. The virus causes white spot disease with symptoms, including white spot on the exoskeleton with sizes ranging from barely visible to 3 mm in diameter. Signs or symptoms. The white spots are actually not a re reliable sign to diagnose the disease alone because there can also be caused by environmental factors such as high pH of the water or even by some other bacteria. Stream affected by WSD exhibit a loss in appetite and abnormal swimming patterns such as swimming on the other their side, gathering around the edges of the pound, or swimming near the surface. Appearance of white spot syndrome loss carapace high degrees of color variation with a predominance of darkened red, brown, or pink body surface and appendages. Heavy fouling of the surface and gills by external parasites are its signs. For better, white midgut lined through the abdomen of severely affected larvae and post larvae. For environmental and chemical disease prevention and control, 
it is important that farmers check if the stock contains WSSV and to destroy the stock as soon as it is proven to be infected. The water quality must be kept in check, regularly cleaned and monitored for possible infective sources. Avoid purchasing no pili or host larvae from sources that may not or may not be infected with the virus. When used on eggs, no pili and host larvae, iodine and water washes are likely to eradicate and eliminate the virus. To diagnose and monitor the WSSV, use the most sensitive and reliable diagnostic tests available, such as DNA-based technologies such as the PCR and in-situ hybridization of tissues lesions will be used. Increase acclimatization times before stocking, use non-specific immune stimulants and fortified mineral and vitamin diets to increase stress tolerance. tolerance. Consider stocking during times of the year when the shrimp will not be subjected to severe stress from sudden temperature and salinity changes. Use high quality feeds and continue to use non-specific immune stimulants throughout their life cycle, ensuring that stock densities are maintained. Next, we have early mortality syndrome. The causative agent, early mortality syndrome or EMS is caused by vibro parahemolyticus in panade shrimp, also known as acute hepatopancreatic necrosis disease. Signs or symptoms, it affects the post larvae stage and can be diagnosed through truly 20 to 30 days after stocking. According to reports, the disease can cause up to 100% mortality in penetrate shrimp. It's environmental and chemical disease prevention and control. To prevent, to prevent farmers need to focus on quality good stock and post larvae. Farm managers practices such as cleaning the pond bottom and preparing the pond water determining the stocking density, choosing feeds and feeding practices, and monitor water quality fluctuations must be observed as these were found to be connected to AHPNB outbreaks. The study found that while it is important to disinfect plants, it is recommended to grow the shrimp in water that has a biodiverse microbial system. This can be done by adding probiotics to the pond water. Third disease is the shell disease, cause a causative agent, Shell disease, also known as brown or black spot disease, black rot, or even the necrosis of appendages is caused by shell-breaking bacteria within the vibro, aeromonas, and pseudomonas families. This disease affects shrimp from their larval stage up to adult food. Signs or symptoms. During the larvae, ralvar, and post-larval stages, the affected limes has an appearance like a cigarette butt dark brown and ashy in color with obvious blisters. These blisters usually contain a substance with a gel-like texture and can appear large enough to form a bulge on the shrimp's body. The disease can cause problems with molting and can erode a large portion of the blisters which cause the water to emit a foul odor. The affected shrimp can also become cannibalistic or die from stress. Environmental and chemical disease prevention and control. It is important to maintain good water quality to prevent shell disease. The organic load of the water must be maintained at a low level by removing dead shrimp and melted exoskeleton, which can contain or feed unwanted bacteria. We have the fourth is the microsporidiosis causative agent. Microsporidiosis is a protozoan disease, also called white ovaries or microporidian infection. This disease is caused by microsporidia, poradia, protozoans that can only be seen on the infected tissue under a microscope. Signs or symptoms, juvenile and adult shrimp often exhibit the disease when there are tissue or organs that turn an opaque white. The parasite can replace the affected tissue and can cause sterility among shrimp, turning the ovaries white. While the infection's rate is usually less than 10%, the parasitic micro, microsporadia has a high chance of causing microsporidiosis. It's environmental and chemical disease prevention and control. To prevent the growth of the protozoa, it is good practice to disinfect culture facilities with chlorine or iodine-containing compounds. 
infected shrimp must be isolated and destroyed by burning or boiling. The most effective way to prevent possible spread of the disease is to identify the reservoir species and to discontinue the growth of commercial production. Lastly, we have filamentous bacterial disease, causative agent. Filamentous bacterial disease is another disease that shrimp farmers should look out for. The disease is caused by Leuxorix species and can affect the shrimp from its larval stage to adult food. It observes under a microscope and the body and the gills of the shrimp will appear to have a thread-like growth that is all colorless. For the signs and, or symptoms, when infected with the disease, the shrimp's eggs have filaments on the surface which can cause problems with respiration or hatching. If the shrimp's gills are affected, the bacteria block the respiratory surfaces and can also cause problems with respiration. Besides the respiratory failure, the bacterial disease can cause the larvae and cause larvae to have problems with normal movement and molting. There is also a possibility that the growth, grown shrimps can die. For its environmental and chemical disease prevention and control, good water quality must be observed and maintained. In particular, dissolved oxygen must be maintained in a level that greater than 5 ppm and the organic matter level must remain low. For the importance of disease prevention and control in cultured shrimp, economical, this disease has had a serious impact on all farmers, especially all sm small-scale farmers whose main income was derived from shrimp farming. Moreover, at least 60% of small-scale farmers are thought to have become in debt to bank due to production loss of result of shrimp diseases, thus these outbreaks have caused significant economic losses to farmers and to other countries. This situation was made worse by a lack of alternative income to other fishery managers. However, food are still available from the brackish water areas. These problems affected the potential of shrimp culture to contribute to a poverty elevation. Environmental. Disease can impact directly on wild populations and the ecosystem by changing host abundance and predator or prey populations, reducing genetic diversity and causing local extinctions. Indirect environmental impacts of disease in shrimp aquaculture are more clearly evident. These include the destruction of mangrove habitats due to fund abandonment and relocation to new sites, soil salinization in land areas due to avoidance of disease-prone coastal zones, and use of antibiotics, disinfectants, and other chemicals to prevent or treat disease in plants. Difficulties in managing disease in native Asian marine shrimp species have also led to an extraordinary shift in production. For the updates on the study of Arlur Marty MP et al. 2020, major viral diseases in culturable pinnate shrimps are reviewed. The abstract says the practice and development of a culture of commercially important penate shrimp results in the occurrence of infectious and non-infectious diseases worldwide. Most of the diseases are caused by the opportunistic microorganisms which are part of the microflora and fauna of the penate shrimp. Once the pathogens get the favorable condition, it will cause diseases to the host organisms. Most of the organisms are ubiquitous and are found and reported all over the cultured area in the world. The pathogens are the bacteria, viruses, parasites, and protozoans. Viruses are the most important disease-causing agents in penate stream. The penate viruses are widely spread in geographical areas of stream culture. The shipment of broodstock and host larvae from one geographical region to another region often results in spreading of viral diseases. The penate viruses are the WISPA virus, white spot syndrome virus, WSSV, penate monodon virus, monodon virus, infectious hypodermal and hematobiotic necrosis virus, IHH and V, infectious myonectoris myonectoris virus, IMNV, Taura syndrome virus, TSV, yellow head virus, YHV, white tail disease, WTD, convert mortality, no, no the virus, CMNV, limb sign, 
virus LSNB and strain hemocyte resident virus SHIV. The review examines and highlights the aquaculture's penetration viral diseases in detail and concludes the need and importance of severe disease surveillance of the global countries through networking and coordination to safeguard aquaculture practice for our future generation. For conclusion, the abnormality in the structure or function displayed by living organisms through a specific or non-specific sign or symptoms in general is what we call a disease. Infectious organisms, wrong management practices, and environmental problems can cause disease in farmed aquatic animals. Tissues or organ damage, reduce growth rate, or death may indicate disease in fish and agrocrustaceans. The, co the consequence of disease includes rejection of aquaculture pro products and the loss of productivity. Proper observation and examination of the available signs and symptoms will help the fishery managers to adjust the important parameters and apply or supplement the needed nutrients for the shrimp to survive in their environment. Thus lead us, leads to a better fish management providing an appropriate or suitable fish nutrition. Another part of my topic is environmental and chemical methods of disease prevention and control, highlighting the assay and bi or biological assay. For the introduction, the medications used to treat these disorders allow fish to spend time and overcome opportunistic infections. Prevention is the foundation of any health protection and program, and it can be just as difficult and complex as illness control. Detect disease carriers reliably knowledge of how pathogens are transmitted, development of effective methods to limit the entry of pathogens or carriers into clean fish cultural facilities, environmental conditions conductive to good fish health. The objectives are discuss the different disease prevention and control of environmental and common chemicals, and present and distinguishes the best approaches of preventing disease through management and common chemicals for fish farm. For environmental methods, good management. To ensure good water, to ensure good management, we should have ensure the good water quality, sufficient supply and of dissolved oxygen concentration and pollution-free environment. Keep the pond environment healthy control seal, plant, maintain a healthy phytoplankton and zooplankton balance, and exchange water as needed. Use mechanical aeration if necessary, clean the pond on a regular basis, as you can see on the picture. Prevent the entry of disease organisms. We have here image source, the cow. We have here a construction part here. Cut two rectangular pieces of mesh fold the edges into two and sew together with a double row or stitches. Roll the two pieces into a cylindrical and sew the open side as you did before. Then insert the those drawstring near the upper end. Then at the bottom, we have here the, the lower end, tie them, tie the lower end. Then here, I sleep filter supported by wooden frame Last, the, the demonstration now is the slip filter partially floating in the water. Prevent the spread of disease organisms. We have here disinfect pond, pans on a regular basis. Disinfect breathing pans. Separate equipment from handling small and large fish. Under the environmental method, we have provision of pathogen-free water sources. The most acceptable source of water that is free from pathogens are underground waters. Currently, these water sources are limited, both for farms and hatcheries and for other special fish culture units. Thus, aquaculturists resort to using inflow surface water from rivers and channels. Installing suitable fi filters can somehow reduce the numbers of invasion stages of parasites of inflow water, especially in supplying smaller reservoir with intensive culture. Before the filter installation, bars are generally replaced first in order to separate rock particles. We have here a model, the gravity-fed multi-chamber filter and its mechanism 
of filtration for a water cleaner water system so we have here the construction so first we have a 10 centimeter slide valve is fitted to both the inlet and outlet of the vortex when the standpipe is pulled and the water and debris are flush to waste, these valves are closed to prevent water from tracking back through the connecting pipe work. So the vortex chamber in which heavy solids such as fish waste, leaves, blank weed, blanket weed, and general debris settle out. Drain pipe leading to discharge chamber. First, biological or chemical stage with brushes to remove particles that have passed through the vortex. Air stones in each, trans in each transfer port oxygenate water as it passes through without disturbing the bacteria. The, airs, the air stones are not located to dip that bubbles pass through to the next body and cause tracking. Perform plastic honeycomb filter medium that provides a large surface area for bacterial growth. This submersible pump resorts re returns water to the pond and sets up the flow of water through the filter. Porous ceramic filter medium that acts as a biological filter and also strain out the small particles. Discharge chamber with four standpipes to flush the waste from the bottom of each chamber. And here at the last portion, discharge water runs to waste under gravity through a 10 centimeter pipe and T trap. Next is the, pro Next is the protection from pathogen transfer. Introduced fishes that came from other territories must also be quantified quarantined for a period of one year, regardless whether native or extra extraneous species. Imported fishes from abroad should have longer quarantine duration of until three years. Extending the duration of quarantine is very critical, particularly in spawners, but then predetermined for further production of imported species. So self-sustaining stock production in, in individual farms and Similar organization is a vital way of preventing from dissemination of fish diseases. Only fish previously examined free of diseases and relevantly treated by medical bats are to be stuck into ponds and fish culture units. Next, preventing the introduction of coarse fishes is a practice that must also be considered as these fishes are source of ecoparasites dangerous particularly in the period of, the, of decreased resistance of fish. Coarse fishes are freshwater fishes other than trout and salmon, considered as lesser class as they are characterized by rough or coarse skin by Hodge 2020. Example of fish that is coarse is, are the Cyprinus carpia, the common carp, and Leop. But terrapon, plumbeus, or silver perch are examples of coarse fishes. We have now the chemical methods. Here we have the common chemicals for fish farm, the limes and calcium cyanamide, cyanamide and agro-industrial byproducts. At the less left part, we have the cyanamide and the, left, the right part are these industrial byproducts. Next, organic poisons. Thanks. Next, letter B is the iodophores, benzyl condom chlorides. Next, formally, malachite green. Letter F, the application of chemicals for disinfectants. The definition of terms. For the conclusion, uses of different common chemicals for fish farm are need to be used in an appropriate way. Disease must be known first in order to select the best chemicals to be used. The best approaches of disease prevention is to take sure of cleanliness, use filters, screens, enough dissolved oxygen, concentration, and pollution-free environment. And here are my references. Thank you and keep safe always. Here is the video. Shrimp, shrimp provides, provides a vital, vital source, source of protein, protein to, the to the world, and, and many, many people, people make their live shrimp. Growing, Growing disease, disease pressure threatens, threatens the availability of this vital food source globally. globally. 
increasing the price of shrimp to consumers and hurting the livelihood of shrimp farmers. Declining water quality and environmental pressures such as fluctuation in temperature, pH, and salinity also serve to further increase shrimp disease pressure, weakening shrimp populations and increasing mortality. Today, globally, four common shrimp diseases significantly impact shrimp production. These diseases are 1. EMS or Early Mortality Syndrome, 2. WFD or White Feces Disease, 3. WFD or White Spot Disease, and 4. EHP or Enterocytosome Hepatopenemiae. The approach to control these diseases requires both new product technology and the introduction of improved management practices which help prevent these and further diseases from impacting our industry. To help control the spread of these diseases, it is important to detect and recognize disease symptoms should they develop on your farm. Early mortality syndrome, or EMS, Early mortality syndrome, or EMS, also known as AHPMS, this disease is caused by a specific Vibrio bacteria called Vibrio parahemolyticus. If preventative steps are taken, it can quickly wipe out entire shrimp populations in a matter of days. Small shrimp younger than 45 days of age are most at risk. There are many factors which help contribute to EMS, such as poor quality post-larva supply, poor water quality, stress from cold water temperatures, and the dominance of fast-growing Vibrio parahemolyticus in pond water which can outcompete slower-growing beneficial bacteria. Further, the practice, the practice of disinfecting ponds to remove potential, potential pathogens or their carriers, carriers actually favors these fast-growing pathogenic bacteria in recolonizing, resulting in additional proliferation of EMS, AHP, and D. Signs of EMS show up as infected shrimp growing more slowly. Shrimp will often swim erratically or slowly and drop to the bottom of the pond. Shrimp exoskeletons soften, their color changes, and they often shrink or swell. Lastly, their hepatopancreas changes color and the shrimp die. White feces disease, or WFD. White feces disease, or WFD, is also associated with vibriosis and possibly gregarines, which are a protozoan parasite. White feces disease affects shrimp typically between 60 days of age and harvest. Similar to the causes for EMS, there are many factors which contribute to WFD, such as High levels of Vibrio associated with poor quality post-larva supply from hatcheries. Excessive Vibrio levels in pond or feeder water. Inadequate pond preparation methods. Low dissolved oxygen levels, less than 3.0 mg per liter. And poor pond water quality management during grow-out leading to increased Vibrio growth. Shrimp with WFD produces a white stream or tubular stool that floats at the surface of the pond. Shrimp, shrimp become weak, weak and lose weight, weight and, and often have, have a dark discoloration of their gills. Dark gills alone can also be a symptom of other diseases as well. As well. This, this disease, disease kills shrimp if it is not detected early. Gut health can, can be promoted by using bio-ish probiotic products to inoculate the gut. Adding bio-ish in the water column can keep Vibrio from proliferating. White spot disease or WSD. White spot disease, or WSD, is caused by a virus, not bacteria, and can kill shrimp at all stages of development. The disease is carried by infected crustaceans and pond detritus. Shrimp are affected by the virus when pond water parameters rapidly fluctuate. Temperature, pH, and salinity changes, producing environmental stress. Typically, the virus is dormant until activated by rapidly dropping water temperature, as can occur during heavy rainfall events. Shrimp infected with WSD have a reddish color. Their carapace can easily separate from their cuticle. White spots will often appear on the carapace, although vanamate may not show this effect. The last disease that we will discuss is EHP, which stands for Enterocytosome Hepatopenemiae. EHP is caused by a parasite. EHP does not kill shrimp, but it severely slows and stunts their growth during all growth stages in which the disease is present in the shrimp. There are many factors which contribute to EHP. Infectious materials largely come from decaying organic detritus and infected crustaceans around the pond. Control and prevention requires close attention to using a range of good farm pond management practices, including Incoming water filtration to remove intermediary host carriers, as presently, there is no cure for EHP.
Shrimp, shrimp infected, infected with EHP, EHP never, never grow, grow to the desired size, size which, which can decrease, decrease harvest yield significantly. significantly. Shrimp, shrimp with EHP develop, develop normally, normally during the first month. month. However, once, once they, they get, get to three or four grams, grams per piece, piece their, their growth, growth slows, slows or stops. stops. As, As a result, infected shrimp are usually only four to five grams at harvest time. There are preventative measures for all of these diseases which can be added to your existing management practices that will improve overall production. The results of these improved practices will significantly reduce disease pressure on your farm and improve your overall production, while also lowering your cost of production.